talk of fresh concession. Saving liberated land. Golan residents, speak out. Today is the 17th of the year, 5768, the 22nd of May, 2008. I'm Elliot Coe, and you're watching Arut Sheva, Israel National News. Shock is reverberating through the capital following the announcement by Prime Minister Ehud Olmert that tough concessions may be in store in negotiations with the Syrian government set to begin in two weeks. Analysts are questioning whether the sudden moves are similar to those in the past whereby a scandal-beleaguered Prime Minister starts making radical concessions to take the heat off of police investigations. On Wednesday night during a speech, a premier gave at an education event in Tel Aviv, Olmert said the resumption of negotiations with Damascus was exciting, but more importantly, it is a national duty which we must exploit to the fullest. He observed the northern border is currently the major potential flashpoint for a future conflict and said it is always better to talk than shoot. Today, an announcement was published simultaneously in Jerusalem, Damascus, and Ankara regarding the initiation of peace and negotiations between Israel and Syria. The renewal of negotiations with Syria after eight years of stagnation is certainly an exciting topic. But beyond this, it is a national obligation which must be exhausted. Negotiations will not be easy, it will not be simple, and it is possible that it will take a long time and may eventually involve difficult concessions. Omer said his predecessors in the Prime Minister's office were willing to make far-reaching concessions to achieve peace with Syria. I have reached the conclusion that the chance in this case is greater than the risk, and with this hope we have set forth on our way. He added the talks could lead to concessions which will not be simple although he did not elaborate. An emergency meeting of Golan mayors was held following the Prime Minister's speech. Ali Malka, head of the Golan Regional Council, commented, We will not let a Prime Minister who is motivated by foreign considerations hand over a stretch of land to the axis of evil and endanger our very existence. At the same time, details on the future Israel-Syrian negotiations have begun to be leaked by the Prime Minister's office. The talks will not be direct, but instead will be indirect and brokered by Turkey. Within hours of the announcement of the resumption of negotiations, Syrian Foreign Minister Walid Mu'alim claimed Israel had agreed to withdraw from the entire Golan Heights back to the 4th of June 1967 border. Shortly afterwards, the Prime Minister's office denied the claim, saying Syria knows exactly what Israel demands of it, and Israel knows what Syria expects it to do. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon welcomed the news in a statement issued at the U.N. headquarters in New York. Efforts are already beginning at the political level to prevent the surrender of the Golan to the Ba'athist dictatorship. A bill has been signed by 57 Knesset members to hobble attempts to surrender the Golan. Iran. Until today, the Prime Minister said there's no reason to negotiate with the evil entities, Hamas, Iran, Hezbollah, and Syria. I still think that we cannot negotiate with them. I will try to understand what this is all about. I will not accept any change in policy unless Assad abandons terror and disconnects from Iran. And of course, there must not be any condition agreed upon before the negotiations. As we say, as the interrogations deepen, so does the betrayal. This is not surprising. It's a spin carried out by the Prime Minister, who is about to stand trial. And he's trying to imitate Sharon. To evade a trial, Sharon uprooted the communities in the Gaza Strip. Omert will agree to sell much more to be saved from the trial. I believe that even betraying the Golan Heights won't help him. The 
Well, this government is not doing anything different than what its predecessors, including Netanyahu's government, did. Nothing is different. The negotiations have been taking place long before the Prime Minister's interrogations began. The Likud lawmakers accused Olmert of carrying out a cynical and transparent stunt in order to deflect attention from his personal problems. According to a report by Channel 2 News, investigators have said there is evidence corroborating accusations of money laundering against Prime Minister Ehud Olmert. The courts have lifted the gag order preventing the publication of this and other information on the case. New information was found on this from a computer used by Shula Zaken, Olmert's longtime bureau chief, recording the transfer of funds from Talansky in detail. The National Union Party is also working on fresh legislation. We talked with Golan resident, member of Knesset, Efi Tam. Shalom, member of Knesset Tam. Shalom, shalom. There are a few non-Jews in the Golan, and the area is naturally fertile. Why would the prime minister want to retreat from the area, especially given its security concerns? I think that first we all have to remember that uh, El Dolmert is... Uh acting like uh, an escaping uh, criminal. He is trying to solve his legal problems using the same model which Ariel Sharon used when he uh, initiated that uh, horrible uh, uh, disengagement with a horrible uh, result, uh, just in order to uh, survive uh, politically. Uh, politically. So uh, it must be said that under these conditions, uh, every honest man in Israel, whether if he support the idea of Israel from the Golan Heights or not, have got to reject the uh, idea that under under such conditions, this guy, Old uh, Ulmert, will be the one to decide our future and our uh, future borders. Thank you very much for joining us, Member of Knesset, Effie Eitam. Thank you very much. Those most affected by any deal with Syria will be the Jewish residents of the Golan. We spoke with Marla Van Meter, a kibbutznik from the liberated area. Shalom, Marla. Shalom, Eli. Omer is hinting he wants to surrender the region to the Syrians. Are you concerned that he might succeed? I think it's in every Israeli's interest. Anytime we have an opportunity to talk with our neighbors, we have to talk to them. But it has to be very clear that, uh, that what our red lines are. And I think this has been a huge uh, problem for most of our leaders. And, uh, and now it has to be clear that, uh, that we're ready to, to talk with the Syrians, negotiate uh, uh, different aspects, but not, uh, not withdraw from land. Is the Golan developed, or is the area still ripe for increased settlement activity? The Golan is uh, ripe for uh, settlement in, uh, in all aspects. Uh, of the 33 communities here, uh, 27 are building uh, private uh, homes and uh, different opportunities for development. And it uh, certainly has a lot of potential and a lot of room for future growth. We thank you very much for joining us, Marla Van Meter, a resident of the Golan. Thank you, Ellie. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Tonight, Jews around the world will be celebrating Laba Omer in commemoration of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's Yortzeit. Hundreds of thousands will ascend to Meron. First of all, here's a reminder of what goes on there. <laughs> Former Chief Rabbi Mordechai Eliyahu Shlita has returned to Shari Tzedek Medical Center in Jerusalem this morning following a neurological procedure carried out overnight at Hadassah Ein Karim Hospital. The venerable rabbi suffered a stroke as well as cardiac arrest on Wednesday, a scant month after suffering a major heart attack. Please recite chapters of Psalms for Rabbi Mordechai Tzemach ben Mazalto. May he have a speedy recovery. Be sure to catch the latest episode of Tuesday Night Live with Ari and Jeremy. You can catch that right after today's broadcast. That wraps up today's newscast. Join us again on Sunday for another edition. Until then, this is Elliot Coe. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. God bless from all of us here at Arut Sheva, Israel National News. 
Have a good weekend.